How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another video of Dyered Angling. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Alec Nickel. I'm a full-time guide and YouTuber here on the Bay of Green Bay out of Sturgeon Bay. And today we are launching out of Sturgeon Bay, but we're going across the bay in search of some big pre-spawn walleyes. I'm gonna give you guys some really, really helpful tips to find these walleyes and catch these walleyes with my favorite presentation that I'm honestly the most confident in throwing all year long. My favorite hair jigs, how I'm working my hair jigs, and how I'm finding these fish um, on the west shore of Green Bay. So stay tuned, you're not gonna wanna miss it. find these fish. I'm driving around out here on the flats doing my side imaging. Um, now the things I'm looking for, yes obviously I'm looking for fish, but as you can see that water is 35.2. I'm looking for something that's going to stick out. It's going to be a half degree warmer, maybe a whole degree warmer, um, something a little dirtier. The dirtier water is going to be your warmer water and that's, that's where them fish are going to filter into. So I'm mostly driving around using the side imaging looking for that warmer water and finding fish. Yes, if I see fish, you know, a huge pot of them, I'm more than likely gonna stop and uh, drop the trolling motor back down and start casting at them. But if you could find that warmer, dirtier water, you're definitely gonna find fish and you're gonna be in the zone. And then it's just about kind of breaking down the area and seeing where them big pods of them are located. So here's a big example right here, what I'm looking for, 37 degree water. And as you can see, there's a bunch of fish right there bunch right here too 37.5 it is a whole two, two degrees warmer than it is over there where we just were um, another big tip i want to give out real quick is if you guys are hummingbird owners go up here in that top corner most people are going to have that on mega turn that down to 455 it is going to definitely get you a lot better uh, pixel resolutions in this shallow water and as you can see right there there's a huge rock bar coming up on the side imaging but Look at 37.8. I mean, that water is almost three, four degrees warmer than the water we were fishing over there. So there's definitely gonna be some active fish here. All right, guys, I wanna go over the ways that I'm working my hair jig here and the setup I'm using for this hair jig. So I'm using a 7.6 medium light fast. This is a mags custom rod. Uh, I've been using these rods for a few years. Absolutely love the sensitivity on them and they're definitely for a great price. And I got that paired up with a PC Fun Carbon X 2000. Um, these are also very, very great price reels. Um, the carbon drag is absolutely amazing. I use them in the winter, summer, use them for salmon, trout, um, the smaller 1000s for panfish. Um, there's so much I could say. If you want to go pick yourself up one of these, go use code DIEHARD15 on the PC Fun website. Save yourself a little bit of money. But the line I'm using with those, is, as you can see, I'm using a high vis green line. This is suffix 832. I recommend using a high vis line just to see um where your line is at all times it definitely helps me when i'm uh, pinpointing and sharpshooting these fish for live scope but it's very very useful in the rivers as well to see what current seam i'm fishing plus if you don't feel the bite sometimes with these hair jigs or plastics you will see your line jump when the fish hits it so i highly recommend using a high vis line but the thing is with that though too is you got to be using a long fluorocarbon leader right here i got a knot in here from my braid to my fluorocarbon leader and i'm using a 12 pound seaguar right now sometimes i'll go down to eight when the water's a little more stained or we're fishing around rocks like we are right now i use a little bit heavier like a 12. Um, and i usually use a seven to ten foot leader depending on water clarity sometimes in a river you use a two three foot leader but out here on the bay i like to use a leader normally the length of my rod is about the like smallest amount of leader i'm gonna tie and then the braid i'm using is eight pound braid now the couple ways that i'm working this hair jig is so we're drifting around with this live scope i'm looking for them i find them using my side imaging and once i find these fish on these flats i'm gonna give out a good cast normally i like to drift cast so i'll just start drifting with the wind um, hardly ever spot locking sometimes we will spot lock when you see a big pot of fish but the ways you want to work your bait is is there's a couple different ways I'm working a hair jig. I'll either reel down and I'll just give it a twitch twitch 
and hop it along the bottom, reel down, twitch, twitch. And now when this water is really cold like this, they like that long pause on the bottom. So a three to five second pause on the bottom is getting triggering these fish to bite. Just giving it a little twitches along the bottom, letting it stop. Um, another way you could do it is you could just do a pull and stop and let it hit the bottom. Let it sit on the bottom for a second. Pull. Um, but lately the double twitch has been working the best. And now another way you could work this hair jig, which is one of my more favorite ways, is um, put your rod tip down low to the water and do one full crank on your reel and just give a little twitch at the end. One full crank on your reel, a little bit of twitch. And now what that's gonna do is that hair jig's barely gonna be moving on the bottom. When you're working your rod tip up, that hair jig's jumping off the bottom a foot to two feet sometimes. But when you're working your rod tip down, that hair jig's doing a different motion. It's darting along the bottom. It's acting more like a goby. It's barely coming off the bottom, which is triggering these fish to bite um, in this cold water because they don't like that bait coming off the bottom as much and they're very lazy. So as the water warms up, you know, I might start jigging up higher or I might be doing a faster reel and a stop. But right now it's a really slow reel and a couple twitches or just a really slow reel and a stop working that bait along the bottom and make sure you're pausing it um, at least three to five seconds on the bottom. Now color wise are hair jigs. I like to use black and purple, black and gold, um, purple and gold, and purple and green. Sometimes purple and brown too. But mostly everything that's dark with that's got some purple in it is my go-to's this time of year. And I'm mostly always throwing a three ace. There's a couple situations where I'll throw a quarter, but mostly always throwing a three ace. And that is my favorite go-to bait all year round is definitely the hair jig. I just want to show you an example of what I'm doing here. So once I find the fish on the side imaging, um, find the area where there is fish, mostly what I'll do is I'll just start drift casting with the wind and casting off this side of the boat um, the way that I'm drifting, um, the way the wind's pushing me, so that way my bait is getting to the fish before they see me. And all I'll do is I'll just sit here and I'll turn the handle back and forth, scanning out in front of me, looking for pods of fish. And as I sit there and turn it back and forth, like right there, there's a couple fish right there. You'll see them down there. So now what I would do is I'd cast right into that group of fish and I'm gonna do that right now and go back to the GoPro. I put it on it because I told him to put the vegetables on the side. Yeah. Otherwise it would have made the sandwich all soggy. They're liking this one. That one? What'd you say? There was a huge pot and I pulled up. Now there's just a few here, a few there. The ones I've been getting are big, bigger females though. Nice walleye. Getting some dialed in here. Picture. That gold on the fly, I'll give you guys a look at that. It's in the net right there, that gold on the fly hair jig. Stinger hook, stinger hook is key. Make sure you have a stinger hook on there. Get a picture and get her back. All right, they're in between us somewhere, I bet. There's one. Hey, I, I sent you my waypoints from the other day. Healthy 25 inch female. 20 for sure. Oh yeah. yeah do a picture. Nice fish. Big girls. That's what we like. Right? Yeah, just like that. And like one full reel. Yep.
you got another one. And he's off. It's a big one. I'm gonna try, hey, to, keep it. I'm gonna try to keep quiet. Other bullets will start coming in on you. Another one. And it's down its throat. There's a bunch of them over there, cast them in there. There's a whole bunch of them. I was watching them chase my bait. So you always use a stinger, guys. A lot of these fish will only get that bottom stinger, or yeah. the stinger in the bottom of their jaw. So you gotta be making sure you're using that stinger. Um, but there is times like today where they've been choking it down their throat. You want them to choke it, but definitely always gotta have a stinger on there, especially in this cold water. The water's only 33 degrees right now. So um, that stinger is definitely key because you will have a lot of short bites then pin it to the bottom. And there's a better look, oh, dropped it in his mouth. There's a better look of that on the fly jig that I'm using, three ace ounce. By doing that little twitch right? Yeah, just like that. And like one full reel. Yep. You got another one. And he's off. It's a big one. I'm gonna try, hey, to, keep it. I'm gonna try to keep quiet. Other bullets will start coming in on you. And it's down its throat. Nice oh, yeah. This might be the biggest. Oh god, it's a hog. Oh my god, Brian. Oh my god, Brian. Oh, damn, Holy one. shit. No, buddy. No, no, no. Oh, it's a hog. It's a giant. No, 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 no. Oh my god. That was a 10 pounder, dude. That was a big one, dude. That was a 10 pounder, dude. Alright, guys. This is the look when you just dump a 30 incher next to the boat. And it's one thing when they just come off, but when you go to net the fish and the hooks get tangled in the net and you literally sit there and try to net it multiple times and it's just flopping and you watch it come off and swim back down, your heart goes in your stomach and your stomach goes to your butthole. So I'm sitting here just contemplating life right now very upset and depressed <laughs> and I don't even know what to say I wish I would have turned the GoPro over so you guys could have seen how uh, how big that fish was but we all seen it and uh, yeah it was a reach away could have touched it it was hooked very good too so that's a heartbreaker but that's why I call it fishing and not catching so uh, 
yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're going to keep grinding, though. Hopefully we hook into another one like that. Um, but definitely uh, breaks your heart when you lose one like that. Did that happen? Look, I just pulled my leader and it. Oh shit! Oh, ah, that's crazy. <laughs> God, he's got that thing down his throat. God, it looks like a post spawn fish already. That's crazy. Female. Oh, I think it is, but it already yeah. looks like it's sagging a little bit, like it's post spawn. Yeah. Oh, it's a male. It's milking. Oh yeah. Yeah. Look, it's milking all over. Look at that on the fly down the throat. Another beautiful Picture. fish. The other one was. <laughs> it's alright, I need to stop talking about that. God, that's a fat female though. Look at her little. It's about been a good morning so far. Still upset about that 10 pounder I just dumped, but that's okay. Hopefully, we get another giant for you guys today. You guys are nice. Alright, well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully, you learned something on this video. I definitely try to throw in as many tips as I could um, so that way you guys can come out and do this. Um, get on your get on some fish for yourself. If you want to book a guide trip with me, uh, you can visit DyardAngling.com or message me on Dyard Angling on Facebook or 608-713-2402. Uh, we could definitely get out, get you out here, get you on some giant walleyes and teach you a bunch more techniques. But with this water being so cold, this is the technique that's working best. And this is definitely my favorite presentation all year long. So thanks again for watching and we will see you on the next one.